Let me start with the NFL because a massive domino fell on the NFL coaching carousel yesterday. And that massive domino fell right on the head of the alleged coaching goat when the Falcons announced the supposed hire or surprise hire of Rams DC Raheem Morris as their next head coach. Now, when I say surprise, I want to be very very clear about this. I want to be completely clear about this. It's not a surprise because Raheem Morris isn't a good choice or a good fit or a dude with enormous upside or one of the single most well-liked, well-respected coaches in the entire league because he's absolutely all of those things. The Falcons hiring Raheem Morris is a surprise because what that means is the Falcons just passed on the hood man. And what a look that is for the alleged coaching goat. And by that, I mean like the worst look ever for Bill Belichick. He went from he's interviewing the Falcons, not the other way around, to wow. They're actually talking to other people like they let this guy off the boat without locking it up. Check that. Not a boat, a yacht. Arthur Blank fishes off a yacht, not a boat. Fish on boats. Okay. So they let it go from he's interviewing them, not the other way around, to they're letting him get off the yacht so they can talk to other people to hell. They're making him come back for a second interview to, oh my gosh, they just passed on this guy. It's all pretty wild. And you know what's even more wild? The Falcons got it right. Atlanta did the right thing. They passed on the GOAT, and it was absolutely the right call because Raheem Morris is one of the most respected and most exciting coaches in the NFL. That's right. Number one, he's not 71. No, he's also not arguably the greatest coach of all time, but he's also not a septuagenarian. No offense to any septuagenarians listening, but none of you guys are about to rip a head coaching gig in the NFL. Yes, the immediate pushback on the hire is going to be Raheem's career record, 21-38. and 38. Then again, you know what that looks like? You know what that looks and feels like to me? It looks and feels to me like Hoodman's 83 and 104 career record without Bacon 46. But it's true. Raheem definitely does not have the kind of overall success on his resume that the mumbler does. Nobody does, right? But Raheem did have a 10 win season as the head coach of the Bucs. Since then, he has been one of the more consistent, impressive assistants in the NFL. And the Falcons know this because he did a lot of that consistently impressive work right there in the ATL. He was the assistant head coach and the pass game coordinator of that NFC championship winning team under Dan Quinn. Then he was tapped as the interim head coach after DQ was let go. In other words, Arthur Blank and the Falcons know all about Raheem Morris. He knows them. They know him. They clearly love him. And they're far from the only ones. Just listen to anything that Sean McVay or Les Snead have to say about this guy. Or or what Mike Tomlin said about this guy on the Pivot podcast back in 2022. Pretty impressive endorsement, right? He does not have a problem saying it. And it doesn't seem like anybody has a problem saying really, really complimentary things about this dude. Like if you thought that was a glowing endorsement, check out this rant that Jalen Ramsey went on last season. Like, I'm not sure that I've ever heard a player, much less a Hall of Fame player, talk about a coach like that. Like, I'm not even kidding. Raw fire. For real, for real. For real, for real. Raw fire. For real. The real. My man, dude, that is some amazing alliteration. I'm passionate. Raw, raw. Raw fire. For real. like that. Raw fire. Hey, dude, I'm not poking fun. I mean that. Like, that. that is an incredible endorsement from an incredible player. But but this is how people around the league view this dude. Coaches, players, owners. To say Raheem Morris is a loved and respected football coach is a grave understatement. 
Again, it's not like Atlanta is taking a giant gamble on somebody who they don't know, who happens to have a great recommendation or recommendations and a great rep. They know firsthand. They've had him. They've had him in that facility. They know why he has that rep. They know why he has those wrecks. And that's why they hired him. That's why they passed on the goat for this dude. And that's why they did the right thing. Now, having said that, it doesn't mean that he's a lock to win. It doesn't guarantee that he'll be a success. It means it's a damn good hire. But if they're going to be a damn good team, they're going to need a damn good quarterback. And that's something Raheem doesn't have. He has almost everything else in spades, but he does not have that. And that's potentially a big problem for Raw Fire. He needs to find a QB, and he needs to find one quickly. Raw Fire. There are definitely pieces to work with in the ATL. There's talent on that roster. In fact, with the right quarterback, this could absolutely turn quickly. But the right quarterback is definitely not on that roster right now. No offense to any of the quarterbacks on that roster. In fact, are there even any quarterbacks left on that roster? The Falcons do hold the eighth pick overall. So what do they do? You know, way above my pay grade. But what do they do? Do they use that pick and trade up? It did seem possible for much of the offseason that they could be a landing spot for Justin Fields if the Bears decide to move on and draft QB. Maybe they take a shot at Kirk Cousins. Maybe they try to bring in Russett. Maybe if things fall apart between Baker Mayfield and Tampa, they take a shot there. Whatever it is, Raheem and GM Terry Fontenot need to hit on that decision. They need to find a guy and find a guy fast. And not just a guy, but the right guy. Here's another thing, though. This is incredible. Another thing that Raheem has going for him was he was a part of that absurd all-star coaching staff in Washington in 2013. You know, the 92 dream team of assistant coaching groups. Being on that staff apparently is the secret to becoming a head coach. Not only becoming a head coach, but being a successful head coach in the NFL. (laughs) This staff? Are you kidding me? Just go ahead and ask Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, Matt LaFleur, Mike McDaniel, or another dude who seems like he's going to get a head coaching job any second now, Texas OC Bobby Slowick, or Raw Fire, because Raheem Morris was also right there with them working for the senior lobster on the most mythical staff of all time. That, that, how is that even possible that they had all those guys on that staff? Rafa. How the hell did that team ever lose to anybody with that staff? But the most amazing thing is, in fact, it's not even amazing, it's hilarious. They were 3-13. 3-13 and 13. <laughs> three and 13 with that staff. <laughs> even Alvin thinks that's funny. Make that make sense. Anyway, back to the hire. There is so much to like about this hire. However, a lot less to like and a lot less to get excited about when it comes to a potential new Hoodman project, especially if it was a situation where the Hoodman wanted final say over the roster. Like, how did this guy get passed over? Belichick, the GM, killed Belichick, the head coach, in New England. And it's quite possible that Belichick, the GM, also killed Belichick, the head coach, and his only opportunity after New England. Because the hood man didn't interview for any other job as far as we can tell. Interviewed for that job twice, but none of the others that we know of. So the Falcons may have been the only team to express any interest, and they just passed on the guy. So sorry, Pops. What that looks like is you're going to have to chill on the sidelines for at least another year before you resume pursuit of that all-time coaching record. Here's the thing. I would not be so sure the teams are going to just line up to bring him in next offseason either. He was supposed to be the top dog. He was supposed to be the top choice this year and gets almost no interest. So why would next year be any different than this year? Maybe. I'm just not convinced that this whole sit out a year, then come back and chase the wins record thing is going to be a thing. Because it doesn't seem to me like anybody else around the league gives a crap 
about the all-time wins record. Nobody gives a crap except a bitterman chasing the record himself. Uh, uh. I mean, does anybody really care about that record besides him? Hoodman just spent this hiring cycle looking like a top 10 draft prospect in a nice suit, sitting in the green room, waiting to hear his name, but dropping, plummeting. Like the cameras keep cutting over to the hood man and his fam and his face looking son. And he just keeps looking older and older and more miserable and more awkward. awkward. Getting passed over and over and over and over and over and over. And then not picked at all. Day three. Now he's an undrafted over, free agent. Over, 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 Listen, my whole point is if nobody wants that guy now at 71, what makes anybody think that anybody's going to want him at 72? Did you really think that that guy at that age is going to change or improve with a year off? I, I really doubt he's going to be one of those guys who's going to take that year and go from camp to camp to camp to camp to camp to visit with a bunch of other coaches and pick their brains. If you haven't noticed, you know what what's not in? That's not in. You know what's not in? Age. That's what's in. Old is out. That's what's old. That's old what's is out in the NFL. No bites on hood. No interest in the gum assassin, Peter Carroll. You know, frankly, it makes sense. It just does. The game is changing rapidly. Players are changing rapidly. They're constantly getting younger and more TikTok-y. And we all know the hood man is not from the snap face, snap face. or Insta chat. Instant chat. Generation. Maybe if he actually had a snap face or an instant chat, instant chat. He'd have a job right now. If any of this tells us anything, it's that Bob Kraft definitely made the right call. In fact, if any of this tells us anything, it's that Bob Kraft waited too long and should have cut the hood loose earlier. The only thing more bizarre than seeing the hood get the all-time wins record in a cutoff hoodie that is not plastered with Patriots all over it is seeing him not get the record at all. He's only 15 wins away. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell to be the first to know when we do upload a new video.